Once the fire's up to speed, it's leveled out, ready for the parcels of fish and coconut. Then the whole oven is sealed over, first with banana leaves, which give extra flavor, and then with mats to hold in the heat. The fish should be ready in under an hour. I'm sure like you, like you had died for your McDonald's. It's the same for us in Samoa. There are certain things that we crave for, and thus the taste of the humo is, it doesn't match anything that comes out of the electric oven. So that's why our humo is so important, and the humo is also communal. See, we do the humo when we have more families coming together, like the Sunday. This is when the whole family had to come together, eat together. This is the day that we have to go over with what we had done during the week and to plan our next week. So the umu is really like a, a feast thing, the, the spirit of coming together. Here's the palusami. It tasted delicious. And after lunch, more fishing. Like building canoes or farlays, fishing itself is something that can involve a whole village. What we're building here is a lao, and that's going to function rather like a dragnet to corral some fish. The coconut leaves, yes, coconut leaves again, act this time like a mobile underwater fence. We dragged them out as the tide was falling and made a huge circle. Apparently, it's been known for hundreds of people to turn up for a lawn. Once the circle's complete, everybody starts to walk slowly towards the center, herding the fish inwards as they go. In the middle, harpoon experts wait to spear as many fish as they can. It's a very effective method of catching fish, so they only do it when they know the stocks are in surplus. feels distinctly like a carnival. It's been nearly a hundred years since the island was subjected to a natural display of fire. The local volcano, Mount Matavanu, created this moonscape and provided enough volcanic rocks to make good open ovens for centuries. But man-made fire is still at everyone's fingertips. Like the rest of the skills, it's part of their culture, and the chief in Falialupo makes sure that each child is taught the skills he'll need to live. It's what they've been brought up with from father to son, and then son to the next generation, and so it goes on. So it's something they've always lived with. The chiefly system's very strong in the village. The untitled men listen to the chiefs, and then when they're ordered to do something, they will do it. So it's a culture that will never die in the village, because their kids will be brought up like they were, by their fathers and their forefathers. It's really heartening to see a place where these skills are so valued and secure. The people are very much a part of the modern world, but they are proud of their history and their knowledge. They use their skills daily because they know that on this remote island, with its changing weather, they may need them at any time. <laughs> we 
when you are in the jungle, you haven't got matches, you should have this knowledge. You are carrying your box of matches in your mind and in your muscles. <laughs> These are the skills that will sustain us forever because of our tiny islands. You know, there are possibilities that there may no, not be any plane arriving here in one month. There may be no ship coming here. So we can't depend on things that are being advocated to us. But at least if we have these skills, we can still utilize our environment for us to live and to be able to survive.